Does anyone else become an absolute horn dog during ovulation? <laughs> I just cannot wait for it, get to, for it to get to my sleeping time because I want to use my vibrator for two hours in bed. All right, let's read this. Y'all, today is my ovulation day and I just wanna anything that moves. Been having so much vaginal discharge the past couple days also. I just cannot wait for it, get to, for it to get to my sleeping time because I want to use my vibrator for two hours in bed. I was even fantasizing about having sex with a very attractive gay coworker today. It's been a very long dry spell for me also. And the last time was before the pandemic lockdowns. I just want a man's touch so bad. I also get really horny during my period. Does anyone else get this? Ovulation and period, insane horniness. Next one. Yep, thanks hormones. I'm actually quite a horn dog normally. My libido has always outpaced my husband's and every other dude that I've ever dated. But it's especially crazy when I'm ovulating. He knows exactly when I'm ovulating because of how obnoxiously horny I get. We've been together for a decade and every few months he calls in to take the day off work for me so we can just have sex all day on one of the days that I'm ovulating. He calls it PTO, paid time ovulating. Well, there's two ways I can tell my wife is on her period or about to start ovulating. She really wants, she really wants dick and can't keep her hands off me. And she really wants a burger and will obsess over it until she gets one. I understand the first one is biological but I can't wrap my mind around the burger thing. And someone else responded, she just wants some meat, one way or another. Okay, right, so this makes, this makes total sense that these women are experiencing an increase in sexual desire around the time of ovulation. And so around the time of ovulation, there is an increase in reproductive hormone called estrogen. And estrogen has many roles in the female reproductive system. It's one of those modulating sexual desires. When estrogen is high, sexual desire is also high. So this can increase sexual desire, the likelihood that a woman will have sexual intercourse, likelihood that a woman will want to flirt and have sex and just be with somebody during this time. So it's not uncommon for women to experience fluctuations in their sexual desires throughout the month. Just as there are times where their sexual desire is high, sexual desire can also be low and it depends on the estrogen and progesterone rising and falling. So for instance, once ovulation is completed, a hormone called progesterone will rise, which decreases sexual desire. And so this makes total sense because since ovulation is over, there is no chance of becoming pregnant. This of course doesn't mean that women shouldn't enjoy sex throughout their menstrual cycle. Okay, number two, weird guy claims he can consciously smell when a woman is ovulating. FYI, women definitely have a distinct smell and it is different when you're ovulating. A woman responded, you're right. Hormones and pheromones have their own smells, but they are not strong enough for us to recognize consciously or anything that you think you're smelling is probably scented by hygiene products and you can't just sniff someone and identify where they are at in their hormonal cycle. And then he responded, I can smell if I want to mate with them and when I should put on the moves. Okay. And then this woman responded, please stay far away from women. And he said, if only they would stay away from me. So this one certainly sounds strange at first. Can a guy, any guy or this guy, actually smell when a woman is ovulating? So my guess is probably not because this is characterizes an evolutionary thing, but there is some research that supports the idea that men subconsciously smell when a woman is about to ovulate or is ovulating. I did a study a while back and there's been many t-shirts smelling tests that have gone on where men were asked to smell the t-shirts of some women who were at different phases of their menstrual cycle. And the experiment found that the men had a biological response to t-shirts of women who were ovulating. And I'm talking like they found that men had an increase in testosterone and a decrease in cortisol levels simply by smelling the t-shirts of the women that were ovulating. So that this whole idea is that men become more sexually aroused when they smell women in her ovulatory phase. 
uh, like I said, an evolutionary behavior that helps men identify when a woman is most fertile. So can't necessarily confirm that you can actually smell when a woman is ovulating, but subconsciously men have this evolutionary sixth sense to be able to tell potentially that a woman is about to ovulate or is ovulating. Okay, this is an interesting claim. Orgasms can and will make you ovulate. And this is the description underneath. Under a post asking about the calendar method for protection, someone said that their endocrinologist told them that a strong orgasm can make them release an egg, so the calendar method doesn't work. I'm gonna call bull hockey on that one. Let's just move on. Okay, so, and there's a few other comments saying this is ridiculous and I can't help but to agree with them. Okay, so an orgasm can and will make you ovulate per this person's endocrinologist, but they said it had to be a strong orgasm that can make them release an egg. I'm not sure if I've heard this one before. Listen, we've touched on the basics here of ovulation in this video already and on a few other videos that we've created here. Um, and so listen, an egg is released from the ovary in a process called ovulation. It happens around 12 to 14 days, sometimes 15, um, before the start of the next period and is triggered to release the egg. So. And this is triggered by a hormone called the luteinizing hormone, LH. And there's a small gland, a pituitary gland, that releases LH. This is the process that has been scientifically proven to cause ovulation. It happens in the brain. I have yet to review any studies or be in a class or a course or be amongst my academic peers where we've discussed or heard of something like this. For now, I have to say no. Even the strongest, most pleasurable orgasm will not make you ovulate. All right, next one. Is it weird if I find out a girl's ovulation calendar to see when I should try to flirt? Actually, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. But at first glance, I'm seeing many people in the comments think this is very creepy. Oh. It's a smart, smart thing to do. Um, however, if this guy's in a relationship with the girl, with this said girl already, it would probably be beneficial to learn her menstrual cycles in general, just for the health of the relationship. Um, and listen, women experience fluctuations of, with their hormones throughout the month, and with their, which also means their sexual desire is increase and decrease throughout the month. So right before ovulation happens, estrogen rises, which tends to mean that a woman's sexual desire also rises, hence her libido goes up. However, after ovulation, when progesterone rises, this tends to lower a woman's mood and her interest in sex. I don't know, I feel like, I feel like this is a pretty good idea. Can't hurt, um, especially if you're already in a relationship, this is definitely a way to help keep, keep things healthy. I just don't know how you would find out a woman's menstrual cycle calendar if you're not close with her already, you know? Because um, this makes it sound like if he's just flirting with her, it's new. So I don't know, I don't know how you can go, I don't know how you'd be able to go about that. I think it's great. I don't know how you'd be able to figure that out. So anyways, the post ovulatory phase is also when women typically struggle with PMS and PMDD, so you definitely might want to make sure that you're hitting the target when you're going up to flirt <laughs> with her. Because um, it, it can be nice for a guy to know what stage of, of a woman's cycle that she's in, so he can definitely plan things accordingly. But I hope it goes without saying that a man or a woman should always ask for their partner's consent before accessing their ovulation calendar. Um, because doing any of this or asking that question can definitely be a little creepy. Okay, my wife is ovulating tomorrow, so she said I can't masturbate. Now that's all I can think about. Tell me some jokes, distract me. Um, okay, so this is a very misleading concept. So I do know that 
before you give a sperm sample at a fertility clinic, they do ask you to abstain from sex, intercourse, masturbation between 48 to 72 hours to make sure that you build up your reserves. But however, there's also been some studies that say frequent masturbation and frequent sex can actually build up your reserves. So at the end of the day, if it's every day or maybe multiple, if you're masturbating multiple times a day, sure, like you are gonna need to get your reserves back up. However, it comes back down to how many times a day or every other day are we doing this. I think where this misconception is happening is the definition of masturbating frequently. The question here is frequently, and that is gonna be different for every man. And unless you get give a sperm sample three days in a row or four days in a row, you personally will not know how your body is affected with masturbating multiple times every other or every day you could even do you know if you did it every day and then tested what it was like at doing it every day to see what your sperm count looked like or if you did it on day one and then day four see what your sperm count looked like that would be my recommendation especially for a couple who is trying i know that could get a little pricey but if you're truly curious about how your body personally is working and what you want to do and how you want to do it and if it would affect the outcome of having a child might be something worth looking into so i know there's probably a lot of guys out there that are happy to hear that maybe not so happy to hear that but there's also i should probably mention this there's also lots of other things that can decrease a male's sperm count like smoking not exercising eating fried food drinking not getting adequate sleep, stress, so many things that can decrease a man's fertility, but there are also things that they can control and they can combat and can increase their fertility. One thing I forgot to mention too were EMFs, EF electromagnetic fields and radiation, huge. Phones out of the pocket, laptops off the lap, um, not being this close to a microwave, you know, things like that. EMFs are really huge that are, there's so many studies coming out. So these are all things that males need to be doing to be taking care of themselves. Um, so a man who is trying to conceive should definitely examine his lifestyle first and foremost and see if he can make improvements in other areas. And maybe he can go back to his wife and say, well, look, at, I'm doing all these other improvements. I think we should, you know, if we're feeling it, let's just try it. Cause I think also, at the end of the day, if you're feeling it too, that's what also matters while you're trying to conceive. Okay, number six. Want to know a secret about female sexuality that 99% of men don't know? Here it is. Many women feel compelled to vacuum their house when ovulating. Some experts believe it has something to do with wanting to clean the nest before laying her egg. So when a woman tells you she is vacuuming, say, vacuuming? Are you ovulating or something? She'll be totally stunned. I don't even know what to say here. I'm gonna look this one up, but now that I'm thinking more in depth on it, I totally cleaned my house from floor to ceiling, ceiling to floor last month, right before I was ovulating. It's just a weird coincidence, right? Um, all right, let's what we can find here on some searching. Okay, so I've looked further into this and it's not a joke. Um, this was actual dating advice from a dating coach. Who knows, especially just considering what I did last month, but it was just dating advice. Um, so around the time of ovulation, women do experience some shifts in their behavior. And so this could include things like paying closer attention to our physical appearance, how we look because we want to be presentable, we want to be courted, we want to be, we want to feel good because we feel good. Um, and it's just an effort to make ourselves appear more attractive to our current mate or potential mates if we don't have one. We might dress a little differently. I don't know, we might be more likely to attend social gatherings. And it could bring out our creativity too. So vacuuming hasn't ever been on the list. I just think it's a weird coincidence that this literally happened to me last month. I can't help but wonder if this dating coach uh, got his wires a little crossed and is referring to 
nesting, which occurs throughout prenatal and postnatal pregnancy and everything. So, cause nesting is when a woman has that strong urge to get her home ready for her baby, not prior to creating a baby, I don't think. So this includes cleaning, organizing, and vacuuming, but this phenomenon is absolutely, probably nothing to do with ovulation. All right, that was a wild ride. I knew Reddit threads could be interesting and these certainly did not disappoint. I hope you weren't disappointed either. And I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a few things along the way. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know what type of content you like and if you liked this. Also consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you never miss a video like this one. See you next time.